This works for any Backman locomotive where you find that out of the box the decoder is just not really all that responsive. If you've got a lot of jerkiness, it's just that CV change the value and that solves that problem. Hey, it's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk and this is We're Yard. And it's just a short little how-to guide today and it's something that I do get asked a lot. And this is brought about because some of the new Bankman locomotives are really quite tricky to get running perfectly on DCC in particular. It's the design of motor that they've got in them and uh, they do seem to be really, really jerky out of the box when you first fit the decoder. And there's not really a huge amount of information on how to set them up to get the best out of them. So I'm gonna do just that today. I've got this uh, locomotive, which is the new G5 that's come through from Backman and TMC. Now it features that kind of motor. And one of the things I noticed is when I put uh, one of the popular brands of decoders in, the uh, DCC Concepts uh, Zen decoder, the performance out of the box was um, very, very strange indeed. And I've seen online a lot of internet groups, people talking about this, but I've been in touch with DCC Concepts and they've sent me a little cheat sheet for some really simple things that you can do with a single CV change that can hopefully sort out that running. As an additional bonus in today's video, I also want to show you how to set up Firebox Flicker. Again, this is something we're seeing in a lot of new locomotives and whilst some have the flickering uh, electronics hard in the locomotives so there's nothing that you need to do others rely on the decoder itself now the DCC decoders generally have a whole lot of different lighting functions on the the lighting outputs but they do require you to know a few things about changing CVs and whilst we've got that uh, DCC concepts Zen blue plus decoder on the mat we are are going to uh, look into what we need to do to get the firebox flicker up and running and this is something that you can transfer to any of your other locomotives using this function so without further ado let's get on and take a look just how you can set up firebox flicker and get your Bankman locomotives running nice and smooth on DCC. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. Before we get into setting up this locomotive, I'd just like to ask a huge favour. Please do tickle that like button and also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be the first to know about new notifications as and when they go up. It's the best way to keep up to date with all of the great content that we're putting out. But without further ado, let's head on over to the workbench and see what we can do to get this locomotive up and running absolutely perfectly. I'll show you a few little tips to make sure you get the best out of your Backman locomotives. The design of the motor in some of the more recent Backman models is such that natively a lot of DCC decoders do seem to struggle to give smooth running unless you're prepared to wade into the CVs and start changing the settings. Now I've fitted this G5 locomotive with a Zen Blue Plus decoder from DCC Concepts and uh, certainly this is quite a common decoder i've used it in a lot of other locomotives but these newer backman models do seem to be a little bit stuttery to start with so i'm just going to give this uh 20 out of 128 speed steps and you'll see that it, it jerks and it 
doesn't seem to be able to hold a steady speed. And I'm just going to stop it there, and it, it just kind of runs on, runs on, and then stops suddenly. Again, 10 out of 128 speed steps. It jerks forward and just don't seem to be able to get smooth running. So what I am going to do is now uh, look at changing some of the CV settings. And this is really easy to do. I'm using an NCE power cab, but no matter what your DCC system is, then the principles are the same. So on the NCE, the CV that we want to change is 66. And by default, this is switched off. So what we're going to do is hit the program escape button at the bottom once. And uh, because we know the number of this locomotive, we're going to set to program on main. And uh, that's the running number of the locomotive. Do be careful here. That needs to be just the locomotive that we're wanting to deal with. So we're going to OK that. And we're going to choose 2 for uh, program CV. And the CV number we want is 66. And we're going to set that to a value of 1. And uh, the locomotive itself just gives a burst of movement and stops. And that's now set to 1. So let's check now on just how the locomotive performs. So I'm going to give it some power. I'm going to give it 10 out of 128 speed steps. And you can see immediately there's a huge improvement and stop there. And it uh, goes to a halt much, much smoother. Change direction. Going to give it some power. And you can see that with that one CV change, we have got all of the controllability into the locomotive and uh, it runs absolutely perfectly. And this works for any Backman locomotive where you find that out of the box, the decoder is just not really all that responsive. If you've got a lot of jerkiness, it's just that CV66, change the value to one and that solves that problem. When it comes to Firebox Flickr, this is a similar process. First of all, what we need to do is just see what we're starting out with. If I hit F1, you can see that uh, we get a constant light on the ready orange function. And if I hit F2, we've got exactly the same, but with the yellow. Out of the box, this is exactly what you get. And we're going to need to change some CVs to be able to get anywhere with this. CV 49 to 54 are the essential ones for this area for changing the lighting functions on the uh, auxiliary output functions from the decoder. CV 49 controls FNO, which is your forward direction light, which would be on the white wire. Similarly, CV 50 controls FNO, the yellow wire, which is the opposite direction light. And these would be used for the directional lights on something like a diesel locomotive. On this locomotive, neither of these is used. So we're going to move straight on to CVs 51 and 52. And these are what you will find F1 and F2 on, or the green and purple wires from the decoder. For completeness, the CV53 and CV54 control function 3, function 4 on the brown and pink wires. What we're going to need to do with this is to change the value of those CVs. As we know that the firebox flicker effect for this locomotive is on CV51 and 52, those are the CVs that we're going to program. Setting these CVs to zero will mean that the firebox flicker will not come on at all. If you set it to one, then the flicker will happen in the forwards direction only. If we write 17 to those CVs, it will flicker in the reverse direction only. To get it to flicker in both directions, we need to write 33 to those CVs. We can then change the rate of flicker using CV135. This goes from 0 to 255 with a default value of 32. The higher the number, the faster the random flicker will occur. 
However, you should be aware that all CV functions will flicker at exactly the same rate. It's not possible to set the F1 and F2 to flicker at a rate that differs from each other. And that's one of the reasons that what I'm going to do is leave one of these two CVs to be constantly on and allow the other effect to do all of the flickering. Otherwise, it won't look quite right. On our NCE power cab, we're going to select program on main. And this is really important. Make sure that is the running number of the locomotive that we're going to be dealing with. And also make sure that you have no other locomotives on that number. We're happy with that, so we hit enter. And then we need CV. Now we want the F1 function to stay on all the time, so we don't actually need to change that. That will automatically be set to the default of 32. And this helps us have a authentic flicker effect where you have one color constantly on and the uh, brighter yellow color flickering over the top. So we're gonna go straight to CV52. This corresponds to the F2 that I showed you before. We're going to set that to a value of 33. And when we hit enter, you'll see that the locomotive lurches. This is perfectly normal. And it will do this every time you write a number into the CV. We're now going to look at CV 135. This changes the rate of flicker. The default for this is 32. And the higher the number, the faster the flicker. Its range goes from 0 to 255. But I've found that 128 seems to be a reasonable number for this. Again, you see the jolt of the locomotive as it accepts that new CV number. When we're all done, hit Escape, and we're back to being able to control the locomotive. With those CVs changed, I've chosen to keep F1, which is CV51, unchanged. That will come on and stay on without any effects whatsoever, regardless of the direction of the locomotive. And it's F2, which is on CV52, which I've chosen to have the flickering effect on. This, as you can see, makes for the perfect firebox flicker. We can turn off F2, and we're left with the steady glow of F1. F2 flickering on its own looks like this, and you can see why we need a bed of the other color to make that firebox glow look authentic. And there you have it, the perfect introduction to setting your firebox flicker. Both of these lighting functions will work regardless of the direction of the locomotive. There are quite a few other lighting effects that you can use, but for most applications, firebox flicker is the one that you're most likely to need. And this simple guide is all you need to get you started in programming these into your locomotives. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video and found it informative. And as you saw, just a few simple CV changes makes all the difference to get that Bachmann locomotive running super silky smooth, but also setting up the firebox flicker. And I think that's quite an important thing with a lot of manufacturers bringing out steam locomotives with a firebox flicker function that really having the knowledge to get that set up really does make a massive difference from having this flat always on color LED to one that goes through that random flicker. And now you know how to set them up, it's on to you. And uh, do let me know about the projects that you're gonna take on using this newfound knowledge. Let me know in the comments section down below. It's always great to hear from you. And please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, ring the bell because otherwise YouTube is very, very good at hiding the video content that you chose to see from you. Believe it or not, it certainly does. So get down through your subscriptions and all of the channels that you do want to see the content from make sure that that bell is rung. And until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk.
Additional support is provided by... This is Clark Railworks, and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains, and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers, and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models, and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO, or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.